Good morning, Mr. Ito, Ms. Casillas. This is my POL for Integrated Math 2 and Chemistry. I will be starting with Integrated Math. This is my homework assessment chart and completion chart. I didn't, do, I didn't turn in the homeworks for these dates, only because I would lost my book, my homework book on this day, and I sadly did not complete it on time. Um, I checked my answers as I completed the homework, and I did ask for many clarifications. My assessment score chart, we see that I have my quizzes and tests and corrections. I was doing good until the tests, seeing as I was really confused on the information, and I didn't understand it well enough, and I did not turn in the corrections on time. And I study several days. Um, my efforts, I went online, Khan Academy, Ms. Casillas' is DP, I looked at notes, I went to friends. I received my lowest score on Essential Skill 2, Triangles. For my first problem in the quiz, I have level 2.5 comprehension. My score was a 3.8, and I got the questions correct. The same exact thing, the same exact with number quiz number two. However, my score actually dropped during the test because I overthought the problems to a degree where it was too complicated to write about in this in the diagram. It confused me to a point, and I also forgot to justify. Um, with this one, I had gotten the points, but I didn't do the correct steps. There was a certain way we were supposed to do it, and I did it a completely different way. However, I got two of the quest I got two of the answers right. However, three quarters of it were incorrect, which brought my grade down. Um, in math, I deserve a high A or B, an A or B because I took notes, I worked in class, I studied, and I understood the material. My current grade is a high B, and this is an accurate grade. However, I could do better with the vocabulary. I would now like to move on to chemistry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Beaver, I am actually, have well, I have high grades in all of the targets. However, I'd like to discuss Unit 3, Chemical Bonds. We will start with ionic charges and the octet rule. With this, it basically, the atom wants to fill up its outer shell with either 8 electrons or 2 electrons. It could either gain or lose electrons to <coughs> fill its shell. For example, electrons from hydrogen and electrons from carbon. It basically wanted, carbon wanted to get a full outer shell of 8. So it bonded with the four hydrogens to create the shell of eight. Then we get to metallic bonds. It's basically a metal plus a metal. It has a low ionization of energy, and it's commonly known as the sea of electrons. By this, it means we have the atoms and the protons, neutrons, all bonded together. However, all the electrons are just floating around mm -hmm. and making sure they're held together. The strength of the bond is strong. The structure is called a malleable solid, and it does conduct electricity. Moving on to ionic crystals. It's a metal plus a non-metal, which means it has a low ionization energy for the metal, but a high ionization ionization energy for the non-metal. The transfer, admittingly, con I was confused on that, but I got it figured out. The metal transfers electrons to the non-metals. And the strength of the bond is weak, although from the structuring it looks very stable. It's a very weak bond. And we would call this a crystal lactose. And it only conducts electricity in water. 
from covalent molecules uh, okay. It's a nonmetal plus a nonmetal. It has a high ionization energy and it shares its electrons. It doesn't transfer, it doesn't just keep it. It shares the electrons. The strength is strong. It has it's just single molecules and it cannot conduct electricity because there's no metal in it. The Lewis dot structure is very easy. It's basically where when you draw just a reaction, you only draw the valence ar electrons around it. It's basically like the octet rule, however we're not drawing the circle. 